Hi, everybody. Welcome to Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. Um, thank you for joining us in the new norm. This is our second Zoom show. Um, you can call us. Yes, we still have the capability to call us, 323-524-2599. I have two amazing guests in the house tonight. Um, well, I've got, I've got notes because I've been drinking. Um, this is the best part about being at home. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, I will introduce first Michelle Harris, who is the blonde, if they, you don't see her name. Um, it says, there's something special about Alive and Well TV host Michelle Harris, and it's no wonder that she's one of media's leading lifestyle hosts. Michelle, <laughs> Michelle fans know she is the real deal. She follows a plant-based diet since age 14. Oh, that's really young and lives the healthy, fit, and glamorous lifestyle. You and Jenny will have something to talk about. Um, she believes in doing good while living well. She loves sharing her lifestyle tips and discoveries with viewers. Um, when she's not on location with Alive and Well, and that's her show, she can be seen all over the place. Uh, and she also is, which we're gonna discuss because we're all animal advocates here. She is the co-founder of Animal Angels, a nonprofit adv ad 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 advocacy group where celebrities promote pet health, spay and neuter, and adoptions. That's one down. Usually I only do one, now it's two. Now you guys, if you're a lesbian, and most of you are, um, <laughs> you know who Dana Goldberg is. Um, she is fucking funny, just as funny as our own Jenny McNulty, may I add. Um, but um, she's amazing. And I'm so, I've been trying to get her on Between the Sheets, but she's had a huge busy schedule. And this week she should have been at Dinah Shore. But instead, she's slumming it with us here on Between the Sheets. She, you've known her, she's been around, she was um, known in the gay community for a really long time. She was a weekly guest on the, <laughs> I'm your fucking bio, on the Stephanie Miller show on Sirius XM. She had her own podcast out in left field. Um, she hosts an annual show in Albuquerque. Is, this, is that still true or not much? It sure is, it's gonna be 13 years this year. All right, yeah. cool. Um, and she's been everywhere. You had, um, yeah, you your logo, you had a logo comedy special, right? Called One Night Stand Up, right? Episode yep. four. Um, and anyway, who gives a shit? It's everybody knows her. It's no one gives a shit. No and one gives a shit. No one gives a shit about me like reading shit off is what it is. I'd rather just get to going. So um, with me tonight, besides these wonderful guests that I have that I'm grateful we're in isolation, so we have them. I have got the straight one, Cara Noble. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a token breeder, but don't token call me breeder, that. Token breeder. Um, I have the um, lesbian extraordinaire, Kim Sanchez. I love Hi, everybody. Them. Miss you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> hey, did you get your nails done somewhere, bitch? No, I did it myself. Guess oh, what I'm okay. going to do tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm going to highlight my own hair. Uh, nice. And then, of course, we have Jenny McNulty, who, if you haven't gone to her page, Every day at one o'clock, she has, um, she's interviewing another comedian. Um, actually, the other day she, you did some guy today, but I, I was like busy, so I didn't know who he was. But, um, but actually I saw the clip and I was very happy that the clip that you showed prior was from CBS, which is my home. So thank you for that. Um, but she's also had Dana on, she's had a lot on. Andrea Myers this season was on. So I just want to welcome uh, Jenny McNulty. And I would just like to clarify that I did not actually do the guy today. He was on the show because what you said, <laughs> I did the guy today. And it's been a long time since I could make that statement. I <laughs> wanted to, for that matter. Uh, That's a statement I've never been able to make. So you're one up on me, Jenny. <laughs> are, yeah. you a I'm a, are you a gold star? I'm a gold star. I am indeed. Me too. Oh, now, too. Michelle, uh, lesbians speak. Do you know what a gold star is? I was just going to ask you that because I do not know. Okay, a gold star means you've never been with a man at all. So, oh, wow, okay. So just, you know, put that in your Just panic. so I know the lingo. You got to know yeah. the lingo. I mean, Cara took Cara a while, but she's uh, she's on too. So you're a new, so. Well, <laughs> that's new to me. That's new to me. What, gold I've star? Got, I've got, I, I've got, I haven't got so many of those stars. No, well, you haven't got so many of those stars. So you've have well, no, because if you've slept with a woman, oh, then 
but you've slept with men. So that totally eradicates everything. That's why I haven't got them. The star isn't just to sleep with the man. The star is to sleep with the opposite gender. Ah. No, I'm like super gold, gold, like no handies, no BJs, nothing. I've never either. been anywhere near it. Either. <laughs> either. I am spotless clean. Super gold. Um, so Michelle, let's start with this. I, I want to start. Now, Dana, do you follow a plant-based diet or you're a carnivore? Or car I actually, I had a piece of steak for dinner. So this isn't going to come. This conversation is not going to go <laughs> no. well. So <laughs> listen, people, it's the end of the world. Don't tell me I only have to eat vegetables. I'll have to eat whatever's in the backyard at this point. <laughs> just know, Dana, just know that a cow got fisted for that steak. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's uh, not the first time I've eaten something that's gotten fisted, Jenny McNulty. Michelle, <laughs> <laughs> are you blushing or, or are you blushing yet? Michelle, are you blushing yet? Oh, no, no. Okay. I'm good. Sorry, I'm having a little bit of audio problems. She, Michelle's probably fisting something under her standing <laughs> desk, and we just can't even see it. <laughs> yeah, just the top. No, <laughs> she doesn't have pants on. Prove it. The newscasters do. Any of yeah. us? Let's face it. Do any of us have pants on doing it in our own no. house? I mean, I was so excited. I mean, Cara wrote when we were texting. Cara's like, "Oh my god, a reason to put on makeup." I was so excited. I love makeup. You said get camera ready, and I was like, I haven't showered in three days. What do you mean get camera ready? <laughs> No, and in truth, I'm wearing the same yoga pants I probably had on every day this week. I just put on some big makeup top to look good. There you go. So, so besides that, we've been hibernating. Um, what have you guys, just bring me up to date. What, date, what do you guys um, have been doing, um, sort of passing your time? I know, Jenny, you've, you've been on air. I've been doing my nightly Facebook. Um, I don't know what the hell I've been doing. I've been doing rants from... 8 30 to 9 o'clock every night on Facebook Live, and people are watching. So, whatever the fuck, it, it keeps me out of trouble. Cara, what have you been doing? Uh, well, uh, today I just ate the stuffed cabbage that I made yesterday. I'm trying out new things. I've, I've suddenly found myself with very few vegetables, but three cabbages. So, uh, I was trying, I've been looking for recipes, pretty difficult to find. But I had that tonight. That was lovely. I made also made this, uh, a celery soup. Hey, what do you mean? <laughs> And the tomato soup. Um, so, and, so, Cara, you've basically been eating. Yeah. Why did I say something weird? <laughs> no. No, we're laughing at Dana. Her, her something went on. And did this? People were talking from Dana's pants. <laughs> <laughs> so, also, I've been working on my Taj Mahal, which actually you can see behind me. Which um, it may be dark soon, so I don't know if you can see. But that's what that's my life's work right there. It's all mosaics. Wow. Wow. That's gorgeous. It's awesome, Thank you. Sarah. Thank you. I'm just Sarah. finishing the night sky. I'm heading into the sun, the sun, sunny side. See, look at this. People, look at that. That's a mosaic. People in the New York Times are learning another language. People are learning how to knit. I can't even figure, I mean, I haven't been able to stop day drinking for three weeks. How are you guys <laughs> accomplishing so much? <laughs> Not I. Uh, not I, not I, not I, not I. You know, you and I are like cut from the same cloth, Jews and Italians. I think we follow the same protocol. That's because we wandered the desert for 40 years. <laughs> we get a chance to sit on our couch for three weeks? Absolutely. <laughs> Annie, yes. I was doing a show every day doesn't mean I haven't been day drinking all day long. Come on now. <laughs> we're not necessarily <laughs> starting the show by saying, hey, we can all get a lick or not while we're here. <laughs> but the thing is, all of us, I think all of us have been staying home. Kim, unfortunately, is going to work every day. Wow. Every bloody day. And your work Every changed. Day. Your work changed a little bit. So how's that going? Well, it's super busy, right? So it's so busy that it's kind of like chaotic. And um, yeah, I haven't, I, people talk about like this stuff and not going out. And I kind of feel guilty in a way because my life really hasn't changed all that much other than I come home and just don't go anywhere after I get home from work. But we're, um, we're really busy. What Two do you of our guys... Is it protective what, uh, clothing you make? No, we 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 spray a sanitizing solution that um, that that kills all the germs and viruses on the surfaces for seven to nine days. So it'll Very last nice. for seven to nine days. That's a good job. And it's a great job, but I'm in the office. But two of our people are have now gotten out sick. So one oh. of the guys, his roommate tested positive. 
he's still negative, but, um, but he can't come, he can't leave his house for the next two weeks. So we're, we're down two people basically, and we're busier than we ever have been. So like, I'm working all day tomorrow now because we don't have enough people to work so but that'll be the first time that i'm out in the public so i've been in the office which has been great now i'm going to be going out into the medical facilities to spray so that's a little it's a little frightening to me really oh sweetheart be please be safe yeah be safe Kim. you're healthy yeah. you're good you're you good masks and any kind no, of no i know I do. I've got a mask, but here's the thing. I mean, you guys, I, I know this is real, so I'm not, I'm not in any way trying to, you know, say this isn't something, but I also know that for myself that I, I believe in that law of attraction thing. And I just don't believe that it has any effect on me. I mean, maybe that sounds really stupid, but I just, I have to keep my mind right there. Like I, my immunity system's fucking solid. Can you keep your mind right there and wear a mask? <laughs> For me, I mean, just, it, just think of it as a new, like, like co -play, cosplay or whatever you guys do, costume play. I have no idea what people do, but just, just <laughs> pretend that you need, like, you're a minor. Like, be a minor and have some role play, but I'd feel better if you were protected. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I'm definitely, I'm wearing a mask. I have gloves. I'm going to be really safe because I, like I said, I, I've been pretty in insulated even in my job but okay. not so much tomorrow and i think too even if it's just whether or not you can keep yourself healthy that way i think if you um just the power like like feeling that you will feel healthy i think is is not so much oh that virus can never get me but like i think if you think that it can that can help to make that stress level like thinking oh my god i might get sick i might get sick that added yes. labor of stress actually absolutely a little bit. So I think even though even if being positive doesn't doesn't offer you a protection per se, being negative I think does actually work detrimentally. Hundred percent yeah, agree. Big mind body connection. So you have to keep that in mind. Like this is a time when we want to stay super healthy and not just drink wine all day, but really, <laughs> you know, spend a little time meditating and doing things to help our stress. Just going out. I went out today. That was my thing just getting groceries and going to a couple of different stores. And it's just so stressful when you get there and everyone has the masks and the gloves. And by the way, I actually got hit on in Whole Foods by someone and I was wearing a bandana and <laughs> gloves. And the guy comes up to me and he's like, oh, 10 points for the hair, you know? And I'm like, it's like, your husband's really lucky. I literally look like I'm going to rob the place in this place. <laughs> And that is why I am a gold star. And that is why I always Oh my gosh. I couldn't look any more like get away from me. I'm sure there's a name for that in the kink world, what you were wearing. <laughs> it's someone likes the whole bandana look, right? Yeah. Give me handcuffs any day versus the bandana. Oh, I said too much. So Dana, what have you been doing besides sitting on your couch? Uh, well, I have, I've been, uh, I just released my first rooftop rant on Facebook and Instagram. So if you're watching this or listening to it, uh, you can follow me and my handle on all social medias are at DG comedy. Um, since I don't really, I don't have a stage right now. And Jenny knows how this feels. Our stage has been taken away and our live audience, like in person, that energy we feel has been taken, but I still want to create art and content. So I've been putting out some, uh, my first rooftop rant where I literally go to my rooftop and then I rant about all the horrible shit this administration's doing. <laughs> nice. oh, by, oh, by the way, Val Milano. Hi, Val. Um, she is in Palm Springs right now. She said it actually was a 4.9 earthquake. Whoa. Apparently there wow. were four of them. Apparently there was four earthquakes from what I hear now. Today? Wow. Today? Wow. Like um, all within the little area. This is crazy. So, Mother Nature yeah. is seriously fucking pissed at us. They're totally pissed at us. <laughs> They're like, you know, you gotta, I mean, you guys are so fucked. We're going to keep you in your home and we're going to let the rest of the world crumble around you motherfuckers. So it is the apocalypse. It's, it's the absolute apocalypse. So Michelle, how did you get, I mean, I, I do horrible transitions, Dana, so follow. It's this ADD. <laughs> yeah, I'm done talking about my life. Michelle, let's go back to you. Michelle, so, so Michelle, how did you get into this plant-based stuff at 14? Well, I actually read an article about a slaughterhouse, not to bring everything down, but I just quit. That was it. I quit eating yeah, I did that. And then later on when I was in college, you know, after pigging out on, because I was just vegetarian then, 
So I you know, got through college on uh, delivery pizza and ho-hos like everyone else, but then I went vegan and got healthy. And it's really been tremendous for me in terms of controlling my weight and how I feel. It's one of the best decisions I've ever made. And especially in Alive and Well, we really just go with plant-based because we don't want to exclude anyone, but it's just great for your overall health and well-being. And so what's the, the difference between, and animals, so what's the difference between plant-based and vegan? It's really the same thing. It's just sometimes people think if you're a vegan, you have to be a certain way or look a certain way. So I kind of like plant-based because everyone, yeah, whether you eat meat or not, eats plant-based foods all the time or, or vegan foods. It's kind of the same thing. Although with vegan, you know, mo like I don't wear leather or fur, obviously things like that. You can be plant-based and I guess not to have that part of it. That's more just about diet, whereas vegan's a lifestyle. But I just don't like to put a label on it. And sometimes yeah, the I vegan just thing is like almost militant. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. am vegan, but I just like to say plant-based is more inclusive than exclusive, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold and on. We have a call. We have a call. So let's take this call. That's exciting. Yeah, no. <laughs> Tony, is it okay to say hello? It's welcome to Between the Sheets. Caller, who's calling? It's Mara. Mara. Yay. Mara. Yay. Mara, Mara, where are you? Mara is also a co-host here on Between the Sheets. We're, you're stuck at home, aren't you, Mara? Oh, yeah. I'm stuck here. That's for sure. What have you been up to? <laughs> oh, just working. Hi, Dana. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Hi Mara. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wondered what, how you guys are doing. Like, what um, since last week, what has been, what's life been like? Drinking. Or the last time you were on. Still <laughs> drinking. <laughs> drinking more. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, what, this is a question for Dana and Jenny. Uh, what do you do? Are you doing any like online comedy things while you're clustered in, you know, while you're, what's the word I'm looking for? Good yeah. question. Qu quarantined? <laughs> yes, like, are you, I just saw, you're like, at home like an introverted hermit, that one? <laughs> uh, I just want to know if doing, they're doing anything. I'm, I'm doing a show, thank you, uh, Gail mentioned, Gail mentioned it earlier, Gail. Gail, I've been what the doing fuck it was so, that? I don't know, I'm, I'm talking <laughs> to three people in my head right now, everybody just back off, okay? Um, <laughs> I am doing a, a daily interview show. You know, I, I used to have Walking Funny where I used to walk with people and I kind of slipped that in at the end. But basically, it's kind of like a, a mini Tonight Show, I guess, or whatever. I, I interview somebody. I do a tiny little monologue. I interview people. I try to put clips of their act in there and, and you know, make it be a little bit more dynamic for you to, to some people with something to look at and just see how people are doing and how people are coping. And I think all the artists that we know, as, as Dana mentioned earlier, you know, we've been sort of our... our platforms have been ripped away so it's nice to be able to let them talk and find out what they're doing and help everybody else because even if you're not an artist just a lot of people now that have a job that they just can't go back to it's right. weird for them now it's i know just, well, what about dana? So what dana dana yeah dana your turn what? <laughs> oh oh it's i i don't know gay you gave me 45 seconds last time i wasn't sure if you wanted to hear more from me i want to oh. hear a lot from you <laughs> um i was as i was saying earlier i'm trying to do some online content uh mara to be honest with you i know some comedians have figured out the online thing and the show and it's i haven't quite figured that out yet and maybe because i've been <laughs> trying to put on my oxygen mask over the last two weeks and just figuring out what the hell's going on with my life uh, uh -huh, that, me, would, that would be funny to watch Maybe next time I'll just do Facebook Live of me trying to breathe into a, a paper bag and stay alive. Yes, yes. Well, I, <laughs> but um, I, I just wanted to say hi. You guys doing are doing it. great. Oh, hi, see, Cara. we're done with hi, me Cam, too. All right, Mara. You know, oh, that's Mara. Get used to it. <laughs> she sits on the pedal. This is the girl that sits on the pedal and says at one point in the show. I'm bored. Can we change into this topic? So, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, I'm not proud of that moment. <laughs> so 
we'll just have to rephrase all your questions. Be like, Dana, can you tell us in 45 seconds what you think about? <laughs> I feel like we're in the democratic debates where there's eight of us on stage and they're asking us a question about health care. And they're like, you have 25 seconds to tell them exactly what your stance is. <laughs> yeah, but so you guys, for Jenny and, and Dana, so if you were going to do like, live live stuff but you know on zoom or whatever isn't it weird without an audience do you you know what i mean yeah i, mean, I feel like i'm doing a podcast like yeah, I, turned, yeah. I went from right. a stand-up comic into a solo podcaster and i'm just hoping <laughs> people are laughing as they're listening <laughs> but it must be weird i mean it must be weird i mean for you guys this comedy now michelle you tape your show or do you have a live audience how does that work no we shoot on location no live audience but I was watching Colbert last night and you just see like, he's not getting that audience energy and mm. some of his stuff's just going a little flat, like still had some great moments, but without the audience, I really felt the difference. And, you know, I do uh, some live things. Like I just hosted the taste awards right before, like the last time I went out before all this happened is on March 9th. So you definitely feed off of that energy. But fortunately we don't have an audience there. We're like, go, go, go. And I just want to want to get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> when we shoot the show it's kind of it's hard i mean you know it's 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 hard i mean look like i work in production you know and like the talk for a few days because one of the shows i work on is the talk they did it without an audience and the neighborhood did with a few shows did it without an audience and it and not even with those people that they pay to laugh and <laughs> you know what i mean and it was like non exciting you know what i mean did and now just give something away there do people get paid to laugh honestly Oh, did I say that? Oops. <laughs> you did. Sometimes they use a little track or something too. And Sometimes. Post. But what they do is they actually post. pay people in the audience, um, especially during the rehearsal, not the rehearsal, the, the run throughs and stuff to see if they're getting the laughs when they're supposed to get them. And then they uh -huh. bring the audience in. And then, yes, they do have people in the audience that they make sure because they did it before <laughs> laugh. Jenny, this is what you and I are going to do. We're going to go to each other's shows and we're going to hold up cue cards that says laughter, applause, <laughs> uh -uh. before. We're going to do for each other. I already do that. I already did. Yeah. That. That's Perfect. the only laughs I've ever gotten. Actually. I already do that. <laughs> okay, guys. Have a good show. Thanks, Mara. Thanks, See you on the Mara. next show. Thanks for calling in. I love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. That would actually be a great job. Can I get that job? Like, I just want to do a whole bunch of shows where all I do is laugh all day. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. No. They don't pay you much to no, laugh. No, they don't. Like, eight, like, maybe eight bucks an hour. I don't even yeah. know. And oh, they give yeah, you no. lunch. You know? <laughs> That's about it. It's not bad, though, really. But Dana, but Dana I have an idea for you with the, the 45 second thing. Maybe yeah. you should just get on Facebook Live mm -hmm. and start like do like time yourself forty five seconds and excuse yourself getting off because you're used to only you being cut off at forty five seconds. Oh, I was like, did you just tell me to get off on Facebook in forty five seconds? <laughs> That's basically what I heard. I mean, there's been yeah, times it's, take, it's been times. Yeah, it's only taken forty five seconds, but we're in a quarantine. <laughs> I think it's going to take longer than that. I'm losing the light and I have to turn it on in this room. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll punt, and I'm not cutting you off. I, if you have to turn on the light, I can punt to Michelle. Punt to Michelle. Ready? Yes. Let's go. And I'm losing the light too, but I've got some on me. I think this is it. Now that the outside light's gone away. <laughs> you know, you would think we'd all have ring lights in our homes. You know, what I, I mean? have the teeniest little one on my computer, but it's for your phone, and it's not throwing off anything. I should be ashamed of myself since I produce a TV show. <laughs> So how did anyhow, you get, I have some. So how did you do how did you get to Alive and Well? What what station is it on? What are sort of the topics? Let us know a little bit about that. Well, we're syndicated, so you should check your local listings, run nationwide, reach about 70 million households. But it's all, you know, wellness, looking better, feeling better, everything we really need right now, actually. So just go in your remote and just say live and well and you hit a little button and pull pull it up. But yeah, we just want to keep people feeling their best. And, you know, especially right now, get everyone through this and do whatever we can, because it's just really scary out there right now. Yeah. So it's time just to stay as much as you can centered and, you know, and be healthy. And I will admit, even though I have a wellness show, I'm hitting the dairy-free, sugar-free chocolate a little bit more than I normally would, I'd say. That's been my quarantine vice. 
and I've been oh cooking my- like crazy. I'm coming up with a lot of new recipes and stuff like that. That is so, not fun. I love that Michelle's buys the sugar-free chocolate. Right, yeah. Oh, Michelle's buys. Hey, everyone. Yes, there's a company called Lily's who does sugar-free chocolate. No, I'm no. a plug for anyone out there. <laughs> I'm, on the, I'm on the border of trying black tar heroin for the first time. <laughs> and you're like, maybe I'll have some sugar chocolate and just throw <laughs> caution to the wind. <laughs> well, we have another caller. Hold on, Car. We have another caller. Hello, okay. welcome the sheets who's calling say 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 hi say hi say hey. how are you les bro what's up you guys up? are busy are you drinking shane yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean someone posted earlier i don't know who it was i think dana about day or night drinking or something i said what or day drinking i'm like is there a day anymore or just we just drink <laughs> you know, there's no AM or PM. How are y'all doing? Good, Shane. How are you? What have you been doing? I, I, I'm i doing. Let's just say we did the Senior Citizens March to the grocery store this morning because I get to go to Senior Day um, with my hubby. So we got, you know, we didn't take anything away from WIC or anybody because I posted that. We got uh, supplies. We got hot dogs, which, you know, and sausages. And meat. As a gay man Lots does. Of meat, As Dana. Man I love that you had meat tonight, Dana. Sorry, gay, but <laughs> gotta love meat. I like. But my I have a question for you dogs. all. Wait, there's a delay. Do you hear me? I do. Yeah. We do. So, is it Kara or Kara? Kara. Kara, hi, sweetie. I love your look. Hi, sweetie. I know I'm gay first, and Michelle. <laughs> Hello. And then Jenny, where'd you go, Jenny? Right here. Is here yeah. she's okay, so I'll make sure. Kimberly, hello, sweetie. Hello, my and love. And Dana. Doing? Of course, Dana. Oh, of and course, Gay. Dana. Did you see that? Of course, Dana. I've decided <laughs> that if they make polygamy legal, all six of you can be my wives. <laughs> That's interesting. Shane, That's I love question, you, but there yeah. are about not, 45 question, million so you can women all say in yes. Just say, say yes, Michelle. <laughs> well, we could still be in a Cara, relationship. Jenny, Kimberly, Dana, and Gay. You all say yes to marry me? Okay, so let's see. Who <laughs> we're going to pose this question to? Dana, because I'm going to yes. give it to Dana. So we're all married. We're on an okay. island. We're out of food. There's a plague. Who eats who first? <laughs> oh. we out food. Well, I think once we eat each other when we have pleasure, then I think it's just up for an option. It's a dress. Well, no, this is <laughs> okay. you're just looking for straws. <laughs> Who's on the island? <laughs> just us. I well, it's Shane. us. It's us. It's us. I married the six of you. It's me plus the six of you. We run out of food, and we have to eat somebody who show. goes first. <laughs> No, I'm not playing Mary Kill Fuck on an island during quarantine. Wait, is that a show? Ah! Mary, Mary okay, Jenny, Jenny, it's your turn. <laughs> Who are you going to eat, I, I honey? Hear you. It must be a bad connection, Shane. I, I can't seem to hear you at all. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you all. I just wanted to give a call in and shout out to you all because I miss you all so much. I just want to give you hugs and loves and kisses. Miss I know, we Shane. Thanks for calling. Thanks for supporting Between the Sheets, sweetheart. We love you. Of course. My sheets are dirty. Come wash them. <laughs> Dude, mine too. I got to do laundry this weekend. <laughs> okay. <laughs> why, Good night. Why, love you, why? lady. What have you guys been doing? <laughs> What's on your schedule? Huh? Why are your sheets dirty? I know. Listen, listen, I wonder why <laughs> well, my because house is dirty I, I, right now. Well, there's, they're not dirty. It's like, do. how can you get dirty when you never leave home, right? Oh, she does. Oh, there's plenty of ways to get the shirt, the sheets dirty without leaving home. Shane. No, we wash them religiously. <laughs> don't worry. Not if you're single. I'm oh, yeah. Sorry. Even if you're single. I'm, I know, but I'm mar- I'm marred. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a guy, it gets messier than a girl. Let's face it. If you're single. Oh, come on. Yeah, but you're. Ma- I'm married, so it's like gay. even Listen, less. I am, I'm not holding any punches. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Kim becomes, Sorry, Kim did I just say that on public television or whatever? Okay. <laughs> so, Michelle, hi. Yes. 
<laughs> well, there's a delay here, so I'll just say I love y'all. I love you so much, Cara, Michelle, Jenny, Dana, Kimberly, Gay. Have a love beautiful you, bye, evening. Honey. Stay safe. Stay swell. You please, just, please, please. Bye, bye, Shane. Thank you. Bye, bye, love. Bye. I really didn't get all of that, but since I'm vegan, I'm opting out of who would eat who. <laughs> True. <laughs> you and Jenny would find the plants, and we wouldn't have to, to eat, and we wouldn't have to kill anybody. I'm yeah, afraid we didn't have to eat you, sweetheart, because that's obvious. What? If you can't eat any of us. Dana, we'd have to eat her. Yo, uh, me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pick on Dana you know and on between the sheets. Cut, cut, cut me up, put me in the out of my misery if this is what's happening at this point, and that's fine. I'll be dead. You guys do whatever you want with my body at that point. I don't care. We're only going to eat 45% of it, actually. Uh... So, Dana, Dana, yes. how, did you start in, how did you start in comedy? I won my high school talent show when I was 17 years old with a wicked 10-minute stand-up routine about my ex-boyfriends and why it wasn't working out so well. Um... And what's funny is when I found that old tape, we had it digitized and literally I'm telling jokes about my ex-boyfriend, except I'm wearing a pair of jeans, a button down and a tie. <laughs> and I looked just like Paula Poundstone. It had polar bears on it. I was very proud that night. Anyway, I didn't touch a stage for about eight years. I got my degree in physical education because I'm a lesbian and it's the law in New Mexico. And so <laughs> after that, uh, there was a show that used to come through Albuquerque called Funny Lesbians for a Change. And they raised higher education scholarships for women in the community. So I went to audition for the show and they gave me a seven minute set in front of 650 people in a sold out theater. And I hit my yeah. first big joke and I heard the most deafening laughter I'd ever heard. And I was hooked. Mm. And so that's actually the, sh the theater that I produced my Southwest Funny Fest in. I go home once a year. It's a nice homecoming. It's in its 13th year. Uh, Jenny's done it. It's a really fun show. Fun. And we raise money for um, organizations in the community. Uh, for a long time, it was the AIDS Foundation. And now we're raising money for Equality New Mexico. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Can I suggest that we do a, um, a trip there for this? Yeah. I would love that. New Mexico is beautiful. It's going to be in the fall. Uh, hopefully we're, hopefully, we're, I mean, I'm hoping this madness is over by June or July. I have a feeling it might be closer to July, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I think we're all going to need some comedy and it's a really fun night. I bring in three other female headlining comics because women in our industry are very underrepresented. So I make sure that it's an all female lineup unless I have either a gay or a trans man on stage, uh, because I like to also do some of the LGBTQ lineups. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's always been powerful. My, my comics are from The Tonight Show and uh, you know, Comedy Central Showtime, Last Comic Standing, and they kill it every single time. It's, it's a blast, it's a blast. Well, Dana, That's if awesome. you will provide us a spot somewhere backstage, now that we can do this Zoom thing, maybe we could Zoom live from your show. That would be really fun. That we can fun. figure that out, yeah. I would love to do that. And uh, Between the Sheets can be a media sponsor for you guys if you'd like that. Well, there you go. We can talk more about it uh, closer to September. Absolutely. Now now that we're talking about the organization that you know, you're, you, you've donated your funds for, Michelle, why don't you tell us about the animal organization that you started? Yes, uh, Animal Angels is something I'm so passionate about because we get out and help animals and basically it's a bunch of people none of us are exactly angelina jolie in terms of being able to get the message out so we're all different on camera talents from different tv shows alexandra paul's part of the organization uh from you may know her from bay watch taylor hasselhoff who oh my gosh she's gonna kill me i forgot the name of the show she's on now and cnbc but it's a real estate show and she's a great realtor and, um, but anyhow, so we just do a lot of things together, whether it's adoption events or raising money or raising awareness. And if I could do a little plug absolutely, uh, right now, and I know we were trying to talk about this on your last show and had a technical issue is that right now we still, a lot of people have stepped up to foster animals from the shelters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. during the crisis and we're all st stuck at home and it makes things so much better when you have the more animals for me the better and I know particularly if you're in LA like the East Valley shelter 
with bigger dogs and rabbits, they need a lot of food. <gasps> They're getting some fosters, you know, for the smaller dogs, but every shelter in LA and everyone who's seeing this across the country, wherever you are, we need fosters and foster a bunny. Do they have any baby monkeys? I, just out of curiosity. <laughs> I need a monkey with a diaper. I don't think so. But, you know, I we did an adoption event at the South LA shelter and they had like chickens and um, sometimes they get pigs in it. The they're going to get a monkey. No monkey, so. But I'll, they're going to one day, there'll be a monkey. And uh, yeah, and but a bunny, I actually, now that you said that, I just, I feel like I turned in from George of a mice and man. I'm like, give, give me all the bunnies. <laughs> oh my gosh, hold on. I'm going to get someone. I'm stepping away. She's going to kill me. Okay, who? I'm taking her out of her little house in my office. If you pull out a bunny <laughs> right now, I am going to throw the table. <gasps> Oh, oh my God! Uh, You're not even funny, Jenny. I said she was going to be on the show tonight. She was very excited, and <laughs> I also have a foster oh. downstairs. But all my bunnies are litter trained and run around the house just like a cat would. And she actually was in a cardboard condo in my oh. office. Now, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do this, Gail. I didn't want to do this. Um, I have a llama. I'll be right back. I'm going to go okay. get a llama. <laughs> It's just, just a second. The cutest she's, been waiting, she's been waiting for this moment her entire life. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So go and get a funny then. All right. I'm going to say Jenny. Oh, no, that isn't going to. I want a llama. Famous. You want a llama? <laughs> I want a llama too. I want a Yeah, we want a llama. You want a llama. I want a goat. But I mean, seriously, but it's really good. I mean, look, this whole isolation thing has brought out either the really good in people or the really fucked up in people. For sure. And, and you know, and it's, um, and, you know, Dana, I know you do a lot of political comedy. And, and I think, I mean, I think you're fascinating. You're like all over Twitter. Um, I remember you said that uh, Kirstie Alley sort of yeah. you. <clears throat> yeah, Kirstie Alley, she's a, she's a character. Goodness, man. Yeah, but she's a Scientologist, so that just goes, you know, one in the same. Um, yeah. But, um, but like, how did you sort of start on your political rants? Like, how? I mean, obviously. Well, I think what happened, and it's interesting that you asked that. I think I've always sort of, and Jenny can. I mean, I would hope Jenny attests to this. A lot of people, when they talk about my humor, they call it smart comedy, which makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I like that label. The, the political stuff, I think just because I am so involved in ma major organizations that um, protect our rights, our LGBTQ rights, you know, marginalized communities, the black community, women, uh, women's reproductive rights, that I've just sort of encapsulated that into my standup now, where when I'm hosting these large black tie galas and I'm raising millions of dollars for them, I know that that material is going to resonate with the audience because we're all there because we're passionate about the same thing. So I've sort of just adjusted it to that for the black tie galas. But I think when I really started getting into it was when Sarah Palin was picked for VP of the president of the United States. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and I will tell you, and I think we can all agree. I miss when Sarah Palin was the craziest politician out there. Cause now the bar, I mean, now she's like, nope. I mean, she's nobody <laughs> like on a crazy yeah, level. Everybody else, yeah. Yeah, it's well, not so. Sarah Palin did though, because when I didn't know, as like a judge or whatever, and I didn't know, I'd go, well, we need to pick the women or the Irish people. I no longer pick women just because they're women. Sarah Palin cured me from that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, she, she almost cured me from a lot of things. Look, yeah. I, I, I still, I still haven't forgotten that Hillary should have been president. I have my. Um, my Hillary, my Hillary glass that I'm drinking wine of because I, I, she should have fucking been president. Just she was absolutely. No, absolutely. I think we all know that. I think one of the things that it just to have a serious moment, what scares me is that with the coronavirus, we've all stopped talking about the election. It's probably the mm -hmm. most important election of our lifetime. And so I really hope people don't keep, you know, focusing on the left hand while the right hand stealing our wallet, because that's basically what's happening right now. 
they're still rolling back regulations. You know, they just rolled back one of Obama's last regulations on automobiles to protect the climate, but we're so focused on what the jackass in the White House is coming out of his mouth that no one's paying attention to what's happening behind the curtain anymore. It's scary. But don't you think, Dana, in a way, like that's kind of, I feel like all along that's kind of been Trump's thing. Like, Absolutely. He, he makes this thing over there that has nothing to do with a real issue just to take focus off the real issue so that it kind of gets swept under the rug. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He's been doing this since uh, the first time I saw it is when his son was about to get busted for the meetings with Russia. And all of a sudden he was like, trans people can't serve in the military. And he right. announced it on Twitter. And then like the ACLU and the you know HRC and everyone was like, OK, wait, we're going to fight this because that's unconstitutional, first of all. And that's what he likes to do is he likes to get the media and the press to follow this crazy rabbit, if you will. No offense, Michelle. And uh, they follow it. <laughs> they follow it every single time. And I wish that they would know better because the media is going to be the one that gets this SOB reelected if it happens. And it's it's frustrating to me. Very. There's yeah. one thing that might actually be good, though, because right now, if this weren't happening, <clears throat> Biden and Sanders would be eating each other alive yes. and mm-hmm. cutting each other down and making it real. So at least now they've shut up for a while so that we just get to, you know, whoever it's going to be. Bernie actually came out and said today something about like kind of backing off his, you know, uh, Medicare for all things. So I don't, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I don't care which one is honestly, I want one of those guys, as long as they pick a female running mate, yes. we just, our job is just to walk up behind whichever one of those two motherfuckers it is and just keep, keep jumping around the bushes going, boom. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I think we still have a look, call. Tony, is the caller still on? No, they hang up. Okay. Continue. <laughs> I agree with you, Jenny. I think uh, one of the things that makes me happy is Joe Biden has already agreed to pick a female running mate, and, and Bernie Sanders was like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll work toward it. And that doesn't make me happy. Like, I have no problem saying that, you know, neither of these guys were my first choice. They weren't. I thought Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris in a perfect yeah. world would be a hell of a ticket. But, yeah. you know, I believe at this time, I would like to see Joe Biden get the nomination, and not because I don't like Bernie Sanders. I think Joe uh, has more respect globally right now than mm-hmm. anyone that was and is still running. And I think that we need to repair these relationships with foreign leaders very quickly because we are basically a laughing stock of the world right now because of the idiot in the White House. But, you know, listen, if it's Sanders, I'm going to do everything I can. You know, I raise millions of dollars on stages. And if it's Sanders, I'll still do my job. And if it's if it's uh, Biden, I will fight just as hard. I will vote blue no matter who. Good God. Exactly. Uh-huh. Sanders feels like he's yell no matter what he's saying. <laughs> Merry Christmas sounds like he's yelling at us and he sounds like he's spitting. The entire time I watch yeah. him, I feel wet. Not in a good way. I feel <laughs> wet when I'm done watching him because I feel like he's spitting on me. I think we lost Michelle. I think she doesn't You're give a right. fuck about politics. She's on the floor with her bunnies. There's, she's, she's probably, they're, they're probably making, oh, there she goes. She popped right up. <laughs> <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard you. I just muted myself because believe it or not, I don't think Jenny was ready for a close up, but she's a little stressed. I don't know if it's the weird Aww. light. Or something, so I went to give her a treat. She's a little stressed, so Aww. I may be cutting it short since this is bugging her a little bit. Bunnies don't like to be picked up, but anyhow, uh, I just want to, you know, I don't really publicly talk about politics. I do a lot of lobbying for animals, and we get votes on both sides, so that's you know, I stay neutral with everything, but. What's going on now because of, you know, COVID-19 is that we're not voting in a lot of primaries that are still left. And I'm kind of wondering, sure. like, okay, we have to make sure everyone gets paper ballots and we're able to move forward for November. And I think that's really important that everyone, you know, make sure that they contact, if you haven't voted yet in the primary, that you contact your representatives and make sure that you have paper ballots available. Because I don't think a lot of states, they, they're pushing it to May and June. I don't think that's going to happen in a lot of places. Yeah, I agree with you. And they just pushed the DNC. So they pushed it um, into, I believe, August. August. But I, I think and my- even then, that's good. To me, it has to be like yeah. virtual. You can't have thousands but of people wait, in But wait, you guys, do you think that they, don't you think that they maybe would push the election? Well, see, I think he's going to try to, but you can't. Constitutionally, he can't actually change that. He can't cancel it either. 
He has to get approval from the House, and there's no way they're going to do that. He will try, and he'll probably announce it soon so that the media bites and does some crazy yeah. story, even though it's not actually constitutional. Yeah. Have you guys got that census thing in the mail? Mm-hmm. Did you yeah, guys I think you're do supposed it? Fill it out it already. I mean, I did mine already. I, I'm okay. going to do it online. Yeah. yeah. I did it. Sorry. Yes. Wait, what? I don't even know what this is. It's the law. You have to it's do what? it. It's what? It's legal. It's the law. It's Apparently, the if you law. don't fill it out, they're just going to come and knock on your door. So Where did you I get it? I want Kara to. I want Kara to literally um, read every audiobook I have. I want you to be the voice on every navigation app that I own. I've done and both I, of these. Yeah. I just want Kara to be like, turn left at Sokovita Boulevard. Like that's exactly. <laughs> her. I think it's actually her. <laughs> so it's someone fabulous. Can play the census to Kim, please. So you go online. It's online. Well, no. I know what it is, but where do you, well, I mean, how did you, how, how did you all know? It should have been mailed it? to you. Okay, that didn't Would happen. you like me to go get it? It tells me, it tells you where to go, census.org or something. I'll go get that it. That would be awesome. Yes, okay. tell me where to go. But you'll have to pay me later. Later. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> darling. I'm like, you can have my that first involve a hot tub. Keep up it. So, Michelle, um, what I mean, I know this is going ping ponging, but welcome to Between the Sheets because there's really no <laughs> here. It's ADD. It's well, totally this is the ADD. new way. Take some getting <laughs> used to with these Zoom calls. I know it is, it is the new way, but no, even in studio, we're just like this. So um, <laughs> we seriously are just a less than six. But I'm guessing months. you can hear everyone. Like sometimes I'm getting a little bit long. Oh, wow. And then normal. <laughs> yeah, we do hear, we, we do sometimes talk over each other, especially that Kim. You can't keep her mouth shut. But I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, like, um, like what's like, um, have you filmed everything already? Like, and it is, is that's going on, or were you stopped in production? Because we are, like, my job we are is stopped. stopped. We are stopped. I am doing, I'm trying to do as much as I can remotely in post with a few little projects and also working on things in pre-production for things that are coming up. So I, we are staying busy and I'm actually getting to things on the bottom of my list. <laughs> like to call this person and do whatever the sad thing is. I just can't get a hold of anyone. I'm like, okay, but you know, I'm, try, I'm trying to keep our, you know, post-production staff, you know, as busy as possible and just do as much as we can to keep everyone working and normal, just even checking in on people. You know, well, it's like, hey, much- I need to check in on so-and-so. We just have to, you know, get through and be as normal as we can. And I'm, I'm taking calls with people I work with that we, like, don't even necessarily need. It's just like we want to feel like we're staying connected and, and doing some stuff. And we really are getting a lot done. So it's good. So how, so how does it work in syndication? How many original episodes do you have left? And then once they run, then you go into repeats again? Well, fortunately, since we have such a big backlog of shows that it's not like we're, you know, they're, they're just keep re-airing it. If there were still tape, they used to say, oh, they, they'd air it till the tape gives out and there's no more tape. So it's, you know, forever. But yeah, so as we do new episodes, they just add them in to the existing library. So it's not that much pressure, but yes, we had a lot of stuff we needed to get done that's not getting done, but there's nothing you can do. You just, we have to take it in stride and just want to get everyone back to work, really. So what did you do before Alive and Well? Oh my gosh, we've been on the air for so, so long. Um, before that, I was you know, acting. And then we came up with the idea to do Alive and Well because I was literally doing free cooking classes in Whole Foods on the weekends. <laughs> they give me a gift card or something, but I wanted people to be healthy and plant-based and all that kind of stuff. So I'd be on the weekends, hey, this is how you make veggie chili or whatever, you know? So That's probably why that guy recognized you with your bandana and your gloves <laughs> off. <laughs> Maybe it's the hair or something. I have no idea, but you know, so yeah, and then we just decided we were working on a totally different show at the time. And my husband said to me, we should do this for a show. And I'm like, okay. And you know, at first I kind of resisted because I thought the clothes are going to be really ugly. And <laughs> <laughs> you're doing like a lifestyle show, but I managed to sneak some good wardrobe in there. And, you know, I just love doing it because it's, it's really what I 
live in my life. So it's just an extension of what I do every day. Do you keep it around the Los Angeles area or do you go like out to other states and stuff? You know, we've shot some things in the Caribbean and different places, but as you know, it's just really difficult to get, you know, we love our crew and to move everyone and it's costly. So we're, you know, we will travel sometimes, uh, but mostly in, in the Southern California area. Yes. Very I'm so can, sorry to... Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. Jenny, I, is there feet and hands in your background? Someone there just are. walked. Like, what is happening? I feel like I dropped a sheet of acid. <laughs> I know. I mean, if you're going to put something behind you, let it be porn, for Christ's sake. <laughs> hands were. It's like a really kind of low-level porn with feet and hands, a balloon, and a pigeon. You make up your own story. <laughs> Jenny, I oh, tried Jesus. those backgrounds that you're using, and like parts of my body kept disappearing. So that's why you have the tour in my office. I know why. <laughs> I know why. The color that you're pulling out, then. No, I wasn't. It wasn't like green, and I was wearing green. I had no idea, but I'm like, what is going on with this? I can't figure out why my arm is going away. Like part of my arm just vanished. So you're doing really well with it. Oh, thank you. Well, she's been working on it. Uh, <laughs> if she could just get her audio right on her show, we'd be good. You know what? The last two days, I've gotten that right. I know. It's but I'm figuring it all out, Gay Ann. I'm figuring it out. We've got to get this going. I have the information. Oh, and here comes Cara. Is that a coffee or wine stain on your? I'm afraid that's tea bag. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, Shane. Shane would have loved that comment. Yeah, exactly. Tea bag in. So yeah, it was in my. Is in my trash. So you go to. Um... <laughs> Oh, fine. All right. You're happy Americans. Here. Your response is required by law. You have to by law. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> by law, my dear. And you go to um I'll be right um, back. I need more wine. Hold on. My, my, my She's gonna go fill out the census. Sorry, Carol. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> my 2020 census.gov. But wait, we have was a I number on the card that? you need to put in. Well, you know what? I did get sent a number and I couldn't find it. So, but that doesn't matter. It's on that card. It's not on this card. And um, this just says to resident. Uh, there was another one though. I did get it on okay. something. And then it got lost somewhere. Oh, but wait, like, wait, wait. So it was addressed there. to resident? This one is just addressed to resident. Did you throw, throw it out? Shit away. But once you go on there, <gasps> put in your Oh address, my God. Your <laughs> They're gonna fucking arrest you, Kimberly Sanchez. Oh, that's the, that's the least of my worries right there. <laughs> what did you do, sweetheart? Did she do something naughty? Will you guys come visit me in prison? Yeah. In I've prison? Been, I've been in lots of prisons. I've been in like eight <laughs> prisons. I have been in eight prisons visiting. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Cara's ex-husband was in jail. In yes. prison. He was in prison before I married him, but we used to visit his friends. <laughs> Cara, why mind. don't we, Cara, why don't we hang out? Why don't we know each other? Yeah, yeah you wait. You wait. You wait. Oh. You hear the whole story. Did I'll you help you finish your mosaic over wine. I need to hear about all of your ex-husbands. No, don't time. worry. We're going to have a part. Once this thing is over, we're going to, we, we usually do, we usually try to do once a month at Cara's. And that we were starting to get into that groove, like our first one, and then the isolation happened. But um, yeah, you can, you're part of Between the Sheets now, Dana Michelle. So perfect. Party at Cara's. Yeah. 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 Wrote, wait to throw my second. middle name out on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I got a wait, hot tub as well. I know the hot tub was delightful. It was. Is it's, it's it. fixed? It's fixed. Oh, you fixed That's, it. Yeah. I had the nice boy here in the mask and the gloves. I just had a weird moment because you said Dana and Michelle, but I thought you middle named me because my middle name is Michelle. I thought you oh. said Dana Michelle. Oh, and I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on? on? But I did do that because what you don't know is I read tarot cards and I'm a psychic and I'm intuitive. So there. Okay, I have some other questions for you then off the air. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> me too. I have a question. Why do psychics have phone numbers? If they were really good, they'd know. Exactly. They'd also know when I was going to walk in. I don't like right, this. Hi, can I help you? That's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Right. Stop playing coy. You know why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> how 
how's I everybody's romantic life going on? I was just going to say, I'm, okay, well, you just led me straight into what I was going to say. Well, because it's I think, because I'm psychic, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, uh, I was putting my hand up earlier, because last week, um, I thought, oh my God, I, I am never going to get a hug. I can't even go and see my oh, son. No. It cost, like too much. So I went online. I bought a pound of C's candies oh. <laughs> on eBay. Nothing says orgasm better than a pound of C's candy. <laughs> Cara, you are my favorite person. And I found another <laughs> box of two pounds of C's candies. Thirty dollars, really good deal. Yeah. So, well, so it's all here. We've got the hot tub, the seas candies, the wine, my favorite conundrum. And uh, wouldn't her wine be called conundrum? Mine's just called Underwood. I mean, <laughs> mine is vodka in emergency because I care about my health. Right there, it's cranberry pomegranate emergency and vodka. Now, oh you know, you've obviously on the call with people who drink enjoy drinking do you drink michelle not usually no but it's grapes isn't that plant-based <laughs> yeah. you know what it's more from um that i acted like an idiot through so much of college when i did <laughs> drink that i decided yeah i'm done <laughs> and also after i got legal took the challenge out of it so. Wait, all of this happened before you turned 21? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, wine does have supposedly a lot of anti-aging properties because of the resveratrol. Although you'd have to drink like, you know, 200 gallons of it. So I don't know if it equals out. You're good taking a supplement. It has antioxidants, which right now we want to stay really healthy and take right. lots of antioxidants. And you know, so, so wait, Michelle. So you're suggesting drinking two, two or three gallons of wine no. tonight? <laughs> no, Which you don't could do. That. I'm sure. <laughs> but I've been can... doing it. I've been. I'm 95. <laughs> I'm 95 years old. Like, Dana Goldberg, you look like you're 20 years old. That's right. I am 95. I have a gallon of wine every night. <laughs> White or red? Have, no, it does have things that are really good for you. I'm just not, you know, not a big drinker. It's okay. I'm not trying to call you out. That's really sweet that you're a good girl. Um, but my question is, speaking of antioxidants, because I think this is really important because there's so much shit on the internet, you know, talking about like this virus and stuff. So like what regiment? And I'm not saying this is going to stop you from getting COVID, but what do you suggest people should be taking on a normal basis, maybe to build up their, um, their not antibodies, what's that thing called? Immune system. Immunity. On, that's the one. Yes, because you want to have a really healthy immune system. So there's so many different things you can take. I like to take something even just normally without you no know, COVID just to you know, not get colds and flu and if you're flying a lot and things like that. Um, I take a Sam Bacall black elderberry. It's and, delicious. Uh, I have it every day. And isn't it so good? Oh my gosh. You can, you can do shots of Sam Bacall, Just go. With you know? <laughs> and it tastes really yummy, but it does help. Like I haven't caught anything in a long time and it's really good for your immune system and it helps your body, you know, naturally enhance your immune system. And also you can take things that have anti-inflammatory properties like turmeric. Now that one thing I'll tell you about the turmeric is I was doing some of those golden lattes. I don't know if you've had mm -hmm. those before. I have. Is that like golden showers? But for <laughs> and, and I woke up with a black if eye. you're drinking a gallon of wine, it is. Go ahead, Michelle. Sorry. Oh, okay. no, I was gonna say, it, it actually, I got a black eye because the turmeric thins your blood so much that just rubbing my eye, I woke up with a black eye. So I what? had my God. I had to ease up on doing the, those lattes. They're delicious. So, you know, so it's an easy turmeric. But also, I just like to add in and, you know, a great multivitamin is really good for you. There's a supplement I like that I think everyone right now would love. It's called Cortisol Manager. And it helps our stress hormones. And, you know, I have a hard time sleeping when I'm really stressed out. And I'm type A normally. So this is throwing me off the Richter scale. I'm trying really just to be grounded. But... The cortisol manager is awesome. 
So I can- need to get that because I have a little, like I try and work out and stuff, but the one place that I can't lose it, I think I just have a stress belly. I have a little stress belly. And I think it's just, a, I think it's four pounds of cortisol. I'm pretty yeah, sure. It, it, helps with that. It's a, it really, really does work. And, you know, trying along with the cortisol manager, if you can, just to get enough sleep and exercise. And, you know, there's so many great apps you can do right now. And I don't know if any of you are doing any really awesome yeah. workout apps. Oh, or- yeah. You know, I look at my arms. I mean, do I do it or not? <laughs> I'm doing yoga. <laughs> look good to me. And I, I actually top part. How do you get rid of this fucking shit? I mean, the top part looks good. Push ups. Oh, that ain't good. I happen. do push ups. You know, it could still be a problem, but worst case scenario, you can get a little cool sculpting there. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Thank you. You know what? You know what? Oh, by the way, hold on. I got two things to say. Number one, I did that clear and brilliance part one, Michelle. And did you like it? I liked it. It was that's a laser facelift. I did part one, and I'm supposed to go it's for not part a, two. It's not a facelift. It's like uh, microdermal steroids. Yeah, sure. It looks great. And then I'm supposed to go for part two, but then no, but then the corona happened. Of course. But I was going to ask you another thing. A friend of mine told me to take something or recommended, didn't tell me, um, to do something called MCT oil. Do you know what the hell that is? That's medium ch- chain triglycerides. Uh, most of the time is from coconut oil and you know it's debatable whether or not it's it's good for you honestly like at first when coconut oil was really popular it's like oh it'll lower your cholesterol but it is a saturated fat so it kind of goes against conventional wisdom but you know it's it's really you can try it and see if you feel better you know coconut oil is you know good as an alternative to some oil in small doses i cook mostly with olive oil me too you know, and I get my healthy fats in California and we love avocados, right? Yep. So that's where I get my healthy fats from. But, you know, there's just, there's a lot of different contradictory information about the MCT oil. Now we should about- also, oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, Dana, I don't want to. Oh, I was just going to say my friend, my friend, Kat, uh, my friend, Kat Stessing from rural Alabama. So I just want to do a shout out to her. Uh, but she's definitely saying, and I agree with this zinc and vitamin C and echinacea. Yeah. Those are all really helpful right now. Yeah. So if you can do some zinc and vitamin C, it'll help your immune system tremendously. What about, well, and how do you guys things. feel about colloidal silver? I, my family. So I, this is the thing I grew up. My mom was the hippie. Like we, she's a, she was a belly dancer. We grew up in like a little commune <laughs> in, in, in New Mexico. And I have an uncle that makes colloidal silver and he swears by it. He swears by wow. it. So I think that it's one of those things, um, he also swears by UV lights right now too, because uh, UV lights kill bacteria. And so people are saying that if you want to disinfect your phone and things like that, it's the UV rays, the UV light that actually can do that. So colloidal silver, you can take a little bit, put it under your tongue, let it dissolve and then swallow it. You can swish it around your mouth and it helps kill bacteria there. I don't know why the fuck I know so much about this because <laughs> I'm a comedian, but I think Michelle <laughs> will probably back me up on this. <laughs> But Jenny would always add it yeah, to a shot of vodka. Like the so. silver. And yeah. I also recommend to it it by vodka. I'm okay with it. <laughs> So I think Michelle just said, if you're going to do the colloidal so silver, make sure to do, do a probiotic. probiotic. And if you're having issues with, you know, carrying weight around there, probiotic might help as well because it helps with bloating. Oh, well, what else do you have? Because right now it's, <laughs> it's either that or cocaine and that seems a lot healthier. <laughs> I lost part of that. <laughs> and your delivery guy comes to you still? <laughs> no, I appreciate And Apparently, and I know this apple cider vinegar cures everything. So you might as well start putting a, te- a tablespoon of that in your water in the morning. You know, who knows what's about to happen? I say if you got them, smoke them. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everyone calm down. I'm kidding. I say just make sure you all smoke individual little cannabisitas. So they're just a little <laughs> bit in there. You could just just personal so that you don't have to share it. It just it's it's all for you. It's much safer that way. Don't they have not that I don't do I don't do pot. It's just never been my thing. But don't they have it through like the vape pen now too? Like the cigarettes, like they do vape pens with marijuana. They do. Yeah. Is it? I feel like pot? Cara yeah. might be the one to answer this. I don't do pot either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like that you say do pot. <laughs> Who the fuck says do pot? Oh my god, are Somebody you on the? Pot. <laughs> I don't do pot. What? Do pot. Who's 
some pot. Oh God, I got all high doing pot the other day. Cam, what the fuck are you doing? Are you <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. My, listen, my phone's gonna die in a second, so I've got to find a plug that's accessible. <laughs> for this like, okay, you get a pass. Don't turn <laughs> off the thing though. In the middle, well, of I the did show, it. She went looking for a plug. I <laughs> find a plug. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Did she just squeak? She did. She did. She did. <laughs> Either that or Michelle's bunny got out again. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> My bunny is just laying over here. You can't see her. I actually may have to sign off a little early. I think this whole thing is like freaking her out. Yeah, Jenny is very upset right now. Sensitive, you know? <laughs> you only have one bunny now? Uh, and I have, uh, you can't see my foster bunny. Yes, I have two bunnies. What is he in witness protection program? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have to go downstairs to get him. So I'd have oh, to okay. further. I'm sorry, but that sounds like a euphemism to me. Well, oh, hold on. We have a call. Next time you're on. I think we have a call. Tony, was that an old email? Because I was just caught up in conversation. It's Do we have now. a call, Tony? Yep, it's on now. Okay. Hi, caller. This is Gayanne and the ladies of Between the Sheets. Um, who's calling? It's me again. <laughs> it's, it's Shane. Shane really just I mean, wants I've someone to talk to. Literally, I called like 10 minutes ago. You, I thought I talked a lot. <laughs> someone brought up the politics of what happens if Trump doesn't want to leave office. And I have an answer for that constitutionally. But you all went off on this whole tangent. And I've loved it, so I kind of fell asleep, and I woke up again, and you got me on the air. So, um, do you want to well, hear now it? Now I'm asleep. Or no? So, if, did you fall asleep on the phone, Shane? Did you? Like, no, I didn't mean phone? to. But the Twentieth Amendment says, if Trump will not leave office, if we have to delay the election, if they do delay the election, if and ah. on that that fact happens, and there is not an election. Him and Pence will be forced to leave the They're office out. on January 20th of 2021. And who becomes automatic president? Pelosi. Pelosi. So the answer to the question from earlier, they don't want that. So they're not going to do that because they would try to fight because the next person in line would be Grassy from Iowa because uh, he would be the next senior. So to answer your question about earlier, because I'm all serious now that I've had a nap um, and listening <laughs> to everything, if for some reason they wanted to push this election, if they wanted to try to force us not to elect, a, you know, by popular vote and or electorate vote, it doesn't matter. By January 3rd, if we do not have a new elected president, Pelosi would become president on January 20th. And at the same time, every Congress member would lose their seat. Wow. So Isn't that not what only would we get a then? female president mm -hmm. for the first time and a Democratic president, but we would lose every seat in the House and it would have to be reelected. That's how they clean House. So everybody's oh. trying to avoid that. But wait, but every, that's seat, why it is won't still, every seat is up for reelection. But I'm telling you right anyway. now, I don't. I've always, I have said so many times in the last three years, I can't believe this is happening. It would not yeah. surprise me. And even if we do have an election in November and we do elect a new president, I don't think it's going to be friendly at all when it happens. But that was just the constitutional rights I wanted to tell you all about while you were talking. So well, I'm going to go back and nap. Go pee and nap, <laughs> will you? <ya? laughs> But Gayanne, I love you. you. I mean, I'm sitting here still. I'd marry all six of you. I don't I'm, care. I'm just, I'm like trying to see how to do this. <laughs> just watching you do your hair while Shane's telling us about the Constitution. <laughs> well, my big deal, because, you know, my, you know, my family's in the, you know, there's nine states still holding out on this stay at home order. And Iowa is my home state. And I, all of my family is following the stay at home orders and emergency orders that have been, you know, chosen and elected for the state to do. And, but they still have not done the governor for some reason, Miss Reynolds. Um, I don't know her at all. I've never met her personally. I have no judgment about her other shame. than what she's doing, <laughs> but um, her and the other eight state Senate uh, governors, North Dakota and South Dakota. I don't know if you're from there, but do we even need those states? But anyway, um <laughs> They 
these people are going to lose their benefits if they don't yeah. get a national stay-at-home order. So my what do you mean they're going to family, lose their several of my family members have been laid off or furloughed or whatever. Some of them have benefits. Some of them are working from home. But until the governor does a national stay-at-order, stay-at-home order um, declaration, they will not get the full benefits, even of the package that we're talking about for the stimulus. They will still get benefits, but it will be nothing. But it doesn't even matter because they're not signing up to be part of a unified country, which is so sad. And I don't know why. I mean, if you look at the map, I've posted it. It just it doesn't make any sense. But um, and there's there's no political change because you add up. I did it last night. I don't have the numbers in front of me. I added up the 10 states as of last night of how many people live in those 10 states. They're not even 1% of the country, but they are holding back so many people and one-fifth of this country from being unified, and it just upsets me so bad. And I'm sad that my my state, my home state is in it, and it's just sad. But um, I don't want to get all political or anything like that because you all are you know, ready to drink some wine. (laughs) But um, again, if to answer the question from earlier – if they don't want to leave office, there's plans. There is uh, the full force, and I hate it, but if it comes down to it, I hope, I, I pray that it would be those people who are in charge of those certain aspects of the government will take charge and say, hey, you're gone. This is it. So, and I can see it happening. The little kid, the little orange kid will never leave. He will not leave because he knows he'll be in jail the next day with the state of of New York. possible, though, as more and more people are watching the news and more and more people are seeing it, that they might just go, okay, maybe they have an order to stay at home order, but let's just do it. I mean, let's. Oh, yes. They're all doing that. And I love them for it. Well, one of the problems, and I don't know if this uh, people are having a hard time with this CARES Act that they just passed, is because the federal government didn't actually do a stay-at-home order and a shelter-in-place order and until, I think, April 1st. The states uh-huh. that were doing it before then are actually being um, affected in a different way. And, and Trump did it in purpose because it was California and New York. It was the blue states that mm-hmm. decided to take things into their own hands and make sure that we stayed safe. So he actually wanted to fight giving the benefits to those states' uh, businesses that closed before April 1st. Like, he's just an SOB. He'll do anything he can to screw people that aren't voting for He's a prick. I mean, he's more than a prick. I mean, this guy needs to get out of office. I still, again, I lived it, as we all did. I still don't understand, and I don't want to go backwards, why he's in this position. It is Russia. Sorry. Russia. (laughs) And and Jesse, Dana... Just so you know, while we were talking, I watched all of this and I did a study with my question earlier about the fact that if polygamy was allowed and I married all six of you and we were on an island and we had to eat somebody, you were kind of nominated to be eaten first. Is that okay? <laughs> Jenny's doing Pictionary now. Would you sacrifice Jenny's yourself? Doing Pictionary. <laughs> Frank, I was <laughs> <to notice>. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I well, you look tasty. I mean, <laughs> the hair alone. <laughs> so we're going to get another vodka. We've got another 15 minutes before it's over. So I was just getting another vodka. <laughs> I have to go be with my husband. I love you all. I love Bye, you, Shane. Too. Bye, Shane. <laughs> Bye, Shane. <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> that's so cute. <laughs> Bye, Shane. <laughs> Michelle looks like she's like on a dark beach and at any moment some big monster's gonna come out of the sea behind her because she's so dark. Michelle. Hey. Oh yes, I oh, some light here because I had some natural light, so I've got is what's coming off my computer. It's oh, fine, okay. you look great. Nice. So, Michelle, like, Gayanne looks like she's in a horror movie. Oh, well, <laughs> something's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I totally missed all that. It was like Michelle's the one to me. Yeah, it's okay because we. I mean, look, 
We have never done this in studio. The light's been pretty good. We've never drank in the studio. So this is kind of fun. I'm good with doing the show like this in the, at our own home as I slur my speech right now. Um, <laughs> thank God there's only 15 fucking minutes left. So Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. That's all. Um, no. Um, <laughs> so is there any other pearls of wisdom or anything that I'm sure, I'm sure this is like no other fucking interview that you or you or Dana has ever done ever in your career. All my interviews I sound like. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it usually just goes derail some way. So I'm kind of, kind of used we to- We derail from the beginning. So welcome on board. We never rail. No, 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 you rail if you rail. never rail, right? That's right. But Jenny, your shows are very, like you have this like thing you like do your thing then you interview and then you do your other thing but you know this show is kind of I mean would you guys consider this show kind of like improv if it was to be sort of in a comedy um genre like an institutional setting of <laughs> but Michelle so is there anything else I mean I don't know we've got 15 minutes so why don't you um, let us know where people can find you, what the show, the animal organization, and anything else you want to impart to our audience. Well, like I said, we are syndicated. Um, we're on direct TV, you know, check your local listings. We're on cable broadcast. So uh, can I get the name again, one more time. Can you give me the name? Alive and Well. Alive. Oh, that's easy enough. Right. And what's the website? Because you're, I know you're on Facebook. We're on Facebook, Instagram. My Twitter is kind of, eh, I don't like it. So it's just my Facebook feed. But uh, you can link to all our social media through our website, which is aliveandwell.tv, like television. And what, ab and what about the animal organization? Does that have a website? Can people donate? I mean, how can they figure that we out? We only raise money for other groups, not for ourselves, because we don't, we don't have a shelter or anything like that. So we support other groups and do fundraisers for them and that type of thing. And that's on Facebook. You can go to Animal Angels TV. There's a lot of Animal Angels groups, but you can go to Animal Angels TV on Facebook. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you. No, I mean, so oh, I was going to go back to the vitamin thing and the thing. So like someone told me vitamin D and also uh, like on the bees. Is that, does that matter? Yes, bees are super important. And I even like getting B12 shots because they give you a lot of energy. You're feeling really run down. But That's I what Judy Garland started. They told her it was vitamin B, but it was really uppers. It was <laughs> uppers and then she nearly died. It was terrible. Go ahead. She, Jenny, she did die. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Judy Garland is dead? She oh, did my God. God. I need more vodka now. How much does a vitamin B shot cost, and how do you get one? You can do it yourself. You have your doctor have to give it to no you. No way. Yeah, yeah you stand in like once a week for a while, and then they taper you off to like once a month. And I think it's usually about twenty dollars. Oh, um, but you can get pharmaceutical B twelve from your doctor if he prescribes it, and you can give yourself a shot. Yeah, they just shoot uh, it in your hip. Yeah, it's you can give yourself a job. You know what works almost that as well okay. for me? That's only when I'm like really super burning. Ooh. Are then. you a lesbian? Who? Oh. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you give yourself a shot? Do you really? That's hey. terribly brave. Well, I haven't done it yet. I know that can be done. I mean, I have vitamin B12 here and I give it what? to my cat. <laughs> I give it to my cat every day. <laughs> week i give my cat a vitamin b shot no. b12 shot Cara, we, Cara, said, i'm not sure if Cara knows how lesbianism works because that's <laughs> not what makes us a lesbian i'm not it's putting like, a shot in my ass with anything and i'm as gay as they come okay. so I'm not sure. and a lot of crazy shit goes on with you girls i gotta tell you <laughs> <laughs> okay i just think that's terribly brave or oh, maybe it's not an English thing. I don't know, but I've never given myself a shot. I never considered it. I'd be terrified. I can come over and give you a shot in your ass if you want. <laughs> okay. Ooh, ow. I'll give you a C's candy. Oh, a candy? <laughs> I only eat the caramel, so there. Uh <laughs> but you really don't need to eat the shot. You can actually oh, use the bling little B12 and it'll still give you a lot of energy. Okay. And especially if you are eating plant-based, you want to make sure you're getting enough vitamin B. 
uh, you know, most things now are fortified with a lot of vitamins like breads and cereals and things like that. But getting enough B12 is really important. So you want to so make sure you're taking that. And it does help, again, with your immune system. <laughs> So what's like the best, Kim, what is the what? best multivitamin you can take? Is there like a, a brand? But I would guess like you, the vegan people would have to take a lot of like vitamins because you don't really get them always in the food. Oh, if you just yeah, eat That's only absolutely food, not true. The only thing you need, you know, if, if you're not getting enough B, that's it. Everything else you're getting from your food. Yeah, vegans I'm probably, and I'm not a vegan, but I really think vegans based. probably get more vitamins than the rest of us because we're eating meat, which has iron, great. Yeah, but, but really, except what else for does iron, it? aren't they, vegans are usually iron deficient. Well, if you're not eating you're meat, right? beans and lentils and things like that, no, I've never had a problem with my. But then you fart a lot. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Fortunately, my system handles it all. And by the way, if that's an issue, you can eat <laughs> digestive enzymes, and that will help you with that. She'll that just help? she'll blame it on the bunny anyway. I mean, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I, like him, I, will, I would like to help the environment and I would like to be healthier, but oh, I don't want to toot inappropriately. <laughs> I don't think that would work. <laughs> not, not any more than if you eat meat. But yes, I, you know, beans are yeah. really good for you and lentils right. are really good for you because they have fiber and protein and lentils are a great source of iron. What about that stuff, um, TVP, Satan, not Satan, Satan or whatever it is, um, tempeh, tempeh or whatever. And well, soy. tempeh is soy based uh -huh. and it's fermented soy and uh, Satan is really good. Both are high in protein and yeah, they're delicious. I make them all the time. As a matter of fact, I pre-made dinner for my husband before I came on air. So he'd be able to wife. eat doing this. And I made him, um, he's probably a little spoiled because I cook, but I made vegan chicken cacciatore. Ooh. Fresh, you know, peppers and onions and mushrooms and vegan chicken. Oh, yes. do you have a cookbook or do you have recipes on your on your website or something? We have some on our website, on our Facebook page. I'll probably be doing a cookbook at some point. I hate to say it. It's just a lot of time to photograph everything and to do that. Recipes are one of the most time consuming things, creating them. And I have a ton of them, but actually, you know, writing them out and putting them in print and all that is a big deal. So we do have them on our website and I put them out on social all the time. But, you know, you can eat vegan so easily and have, you know, a lot of gourmet foods. My husband's like six, four. 200 pounds he's a real big guy and he eats mostly vegan wow all of like all these like the one of the weightlifters that like oh, hold olympic records uh uh who else can't if you follow basketball damian lillard is cam newton is in fact the tennessee titans there was a guy there who was his wife was a vegan chef a plant-based chef and she would make him meals and a bunch game of changers was that game changers yeah, you're talking about Game exactly. But the Tennessee Titans, now there's like a whole bunch of the football players. I mean, these are the biggest, strongest guys. And if you look at uh, gorillas are herbivores, rhinoceri are herbivores, all the biggest, strongest animals on the planet. They're so oh. smart, rhinoceri. Who the I was that? just going to say that. <laughs> I didn't know that was spent plural. seven and a half fucking years at the University of Michigan without knowing a little bit of pluralization, game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but definitely to what you're saying, watch, watch the documentary Game Changers yeah, exactly. because I, you probably have seen that. And it really, you know, shows that how you get in better shape, you get more muscle mass. These are all athletes who really changed their life. They did their blood lipids after eating just one meal with meat versus plant-based. And it, it just changes everything in terms of the amount of cholesterol that's in your bloodstream. So it, it, I love that. And I'm not one who watches a lot of vegan documentaries because I am vegan, so I kind of don't need to. But I said, I'm going to watch this. I'm like, wow, this was super good because it's all these really, you know, mixed martial arts people, like you were saying, athletes, and they're all vegans, and they showed how it improved their performance. So it's not that you're malnourished. You actually have more nutrition and not putting all the bad things into your body. You're taking it Diaz, the, the, the W the um, mixed martial arts you were talking about, Nate Diaz, who beat Conor McGregor. He did it initially because for, he got hurt and he was healing better. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> I'm drunk. Oh, oh, oh no! I'm no, drunk. No, I'm, I'm just, just I'm 
Don't even add, don't, make believe I'm not here. I'm just drinking. <laughs> Fascinating. Make believe the host is not there. The host is no, I'm just worried that if Michelle doesn't get to the store and that six foot four husband of hers gets hungry, that little body ain't gonna oh, last. Kim Sanchez, what the fuck I just happened? <laughs> no, I want I'm to know super you sorry. Sorry. Eat to everybody. You are watching Between the Sheets, and this is our <laughs> second June show, and we will not disappoint. We will always deliver a shit show at some point. So, welcome, welcome. <laughs> do you have a Michelle? Do you have a vegan a rabbit stew recipe that you threaten your animals with if they're not behaving? <laughs> no bunny threats. Actually, I'm going to have to have a lot of treats. I think it was too much for Jenny to handle. <laughs> no, no bunnies were harmed in this show. Okay, no, yes. none. That's Jenny was. Well. Jenny was harmed in this show. She's having anxiety. <laughs> I'm having anxiety. Give her we're a Xanax for free. Christ fucking sake, Dana. I yes. usually would go at this. You have 45 seconds. Now, um, you, <laughs> you um normally would be promoting obviously shows that you're um that you're at, which you're not. Um, right. it's just unfortunate. So, I mean, like I do have, this is a serious question. So like when you guys, both you and Jenny, I mean, you, you count on your livelihood to perform and make money and stuff. So, I mean, like when you guys do stuff, I mean, like how hard is it to, when you do stuff, will you be guys asking for like donations and stuff? Because I think you should. I mean, no, um, <clears throat> one of the things, and I just want to say this before I do lose the time, cause it's super important right now. So I do a lot of hosting for large black tie galas, but I also raise funds for them. I raise multi-millions of dollars for organizations I work for that aren't doing their galas, like the Human Rights Campaign and the Trevor Project and GLAAD and an organization called the Child Rescue Coalition that helps to catch child predators on the dark web. And I was gonna host the NCLR event in San Francisco. So listening, if you were going to donate to these organizations, please do it anyway. They need it more than ever. So even though that part of my job has been taken out, which is so hard because not only was I making people laugh, I was actually raising a tremendous amount of money to make a difference in this world. So mm -hmm. all those are gone. Um, I was raised by a very smart woman that um, I've never lived outside my means. And even though I've just had three months of work completely wiped out, um, I think I will be okay. There's a chance, honestly, that I may have to either apply for an SBA loan to the government because I'm my own employee and I'm, I'm self-employed or have to go on unemployment. And it's just one of those things that I'll decide if I need to do that right now, I'm okay. But at the same time, whether I'm okay or not, if the government, especially this one, has money, <laughs> I should be taking it because um, I, you know, I pay more taxes than the president of the United States, so I know I've earned it. Uh, <laughs> so so for me, not. yeah. Uh, my birthday's April 12th. If people want to give to my Venmo, then you can do it then. I mean, Happy birthday. Happy oh, birthday. Yeah. What's your Venmo? What is it, Dana? Oh my God, I was totally kidding. I don't know what my Venmo is. <laughs> I don't know what my Venmo is. I think it's like Dana Goldberg 6 or something weird. I can't even, I have no idea what my Venmo is, actually. <laughs> I was going to give mine, but now I can't. Dana's like, if you've got extra money, give it to the charities. They really need it. Uh, I can't give out my goddamn Venmo. I look like an asshole. <laughs> but Dana, but like the HR, like I, I had tickets to the HRC event and I was actually looking forward to it. I was going to yeah. sit at Val Milano's table because I'd never been to one before. So is that, are these, all these events canceled or postponed? Well, a lot of them, unfortunately, I think they're going to try and do other events. Um, there's only so many Saturdays left in the year. So a lot of these organizations, now everyone's trying to book the hotels and the conference centers that everyone's trying to get because everything's been canceled. So I think some people are trying to do online. Um, I was supposed to host the Fenway dinner in Boston for the women's health. Oh, cool. And um, that's been canceled. So they're going to try and do an wow. online event to try and cover their um, fundraising goals for the year. The NCLR is going to try and do the same thing in San Francisco. But I think some of them will be able to reschedule. But a lot of them, it's just going to be a hard year. Yeah. It's really sad. I mean, like, I mean, and this has nothing to do with any of that. But I mean, I think the biggest hit that I feel really bad for, because I've always been a supporter of the mom pa sort of organizations. And it's so sad um, that, you know, they're unfortunately the first that are going to get the backlash or have been getting the backlash from this. So, I mean, 
look, I'm between the sheets. I say, you know, if you're going to do takeout, don't do takeout from Panera or any of those big box. Go to the smaller restaurants in your town and support them. Because LA if- Vegan is the best. It's on Centinella, kind of in Culver City area. We order from them all the time. If you and the other thing you want to do, and listen, this goes globally and well, at least nationally, because I don't know what they're doing in other countries. Don't order if you can avoid it. And I'm sorry, but don't order from Postmates or Grubhub. They're taking money from the restaurants. If yes, you can call the restaurant are. directly. If you can call the restaurant directly, call them and go pick it up. And you know what? And I'm going to say this tip like you are sitting in that restaurant because so many, there are 13 million tipped workers right now that are no longer getting a living wage because it's only in seven states that they have it. So please, if you're getting to go food delivery, tip like you're sitting in that restaurant because you would be doing it anyway. Well, listen, and I'll tell you this. I have to just say this because, you know, I, since August, when I sold Sweet Dixie Kitchen, I promise you that every day I have cried my fucking eyes out and missed it like there is no tomorrow and going, why, 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 why did I sell it? Why did I sell it? And I'm going to tell you right now that this is it. Like, you know, when they say you can't see the future and you don't know what's good and all this stuff, I would have lost my restaurant. I would have lost it completely. I wouldn't have had an income right now. I couldn't pay my rent because that was my job. And I would have laid off all those people and I wouldn't have come back from this. I just couldn't have come back from this. And, and I get that that's why it sold and it was the right thing. But man, you know, I remember when we were shut down, when Long Beach had that power explosion and we were shut down for four days. Okay. I thought I can't recover this month after four days. Imagine what a month and a half is going to be like for people. Or two months. Yep. Or two months. And you're right about the Postmates. And they put all these, like, I get all these emails from Postmates and Uber. Like, we're not charging delivery charge. But that's bullshit because they do tack on a fee and they take 15% or more from each restaurant. Well, not to mention, if you order a salad from a restaurant and it's 12 bucks, if you go on the Postmates menu, it's 15. Yeah. They're getting money all over the place right now. So just go support your local restaurants. And a lot of restaurants have had to, who aren't normally shift into to go food. Just if you, if there's someone you know and love out there, just go get food from them. Just, just yeah. help. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a weird, like when your kids used to ring a doorbell and run away, it's the same sort of thing. You get stuff ordered and they like ring the doorbell and you run away. But it's, it's, it's amazing. It's like the food fairy came. Look, look, there's just chicken wings right there. They're vegan. No, but truly everybody, I mean, everybody out there, I mean, even when people deliver the stuff, I mean, do take precaution. Like they said that this, this virus thing lives on plastic a long time. It lives on cardboard. Like if you get orders from Amazon or from Chewy, it, this, this virus hates heat. So leave it on your porti, por, portio. That's a, that's pa- porch and patio is a portio. I just made up another fucking word. You must uh, know portio. You I am known, by the way, Michelle and Dana, I am known for making up words. So, Portio, leave it on like your portio. Slurring, but we, we love it. <laughs> making up words. Thank you. So, leave it on your porch or your patio um, where it gets the heat um, and then bring it in and always wear gloves and stuff like that. Um, just be cautious. You know, go out there and do the mask thing. I mean, you know, you can use that bandana like a hoodlum in in like Compton. It's okay. It works. Yeah, but where I are you feel like that might have been a racist comment accidentally. Yeah, and maybe it's just going on here. I'm Italian. I was raised in New York. There's no racism. I'm not racist. I'm not at all. Um, but I mean, but you know, I have pink gloves. I'm not racist. I'm not. I'm New York Italian. I'm not racist. What are you kidding? <laughs> or if you're the, if you're the president, you can wear a scarf because they're thicker, so they're gonna help keep out the. Germ- He's oh, a yeah. moron. He, uh, he just said he doesn't want to wear them. You know, I'm. Uh, you can wear it. It's not mandatory. I'm choosing not to. But what? I'm like, ah. Oh. But it was He's just too vain. Wait, can I ask something before we're done? It. What, <laughs> so, <laughs> One of uh, one of the employees said to me today that last night it, it was mandatory that when you go out of your house now you have to wear a mask. Is that true or not true? It's not mandatory. No. It's recommended by the CDC, I think. Yes, it's that's all. It's a good idea. It's so not stupid. It. I'm not doing it. Well, you don't I, leave the fucking house. I, You're I, doing I, mosaics I, and drinking wine, goddamn. Why are you? Just throwing your respiratory droplets all over us, Cara. Just because you're English, you've still got respiratory droplets. You almost travel farther, darling, because of the way that you speak. You just vomit from your mouth 
for God's sakes, we need to be 12 feet away from an English person. <laughs> what did you see? I can feel the spit when I said person. Yeah. Are you feeling her spit now, Jenny, on Zoom? Is it reaching you there? I could totally feel it. I was, I've got car spit all over me. And, then, and, and now Dana's oh, sitting here going, why did I fucking agree to do this show? It's going to be more of my fucking career. <laughs> it's, it's not even that. I just, I think God, I'm at home because I realize I touch my face 485 times a day. It's like my favorite pastime. I can't stop doing it. <laughs> you know? But that's the truth. It's that suggestion thing because I never touch. I talk with my hands enough. I don't touch my face. But I put the rubber gloves on, I put the mask on, and all of a sudden I'm like molesting my nostrils and my earlobes. It's like, what the fuck? And I, I, I don't understand because I never touch my face. And now I've got this propensity to constantly fucking touch my face. You have always. Which is why I have a glass of wine always between my hand and my lips. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to say between the sheets. I have a glass of wine between the sheets. And scene. <laughs> now we're done so everybody i just want to say thank you for joining us all of you people out there watching between the sheets we're on the first and third friday of every month here on united broadcasting network um the next show up i'm not sure because I, I could look it up but i don't feel like it um it's either going to be um it's either going to be about human trafficking or addiction i'm not quite sure very uplifting really human trafficking on the next between the sheets. well you know but you know what who's going to do human trafficking it's max mecca or kelly kelly gilliam is going to come on and yeah. talk about human trafficking and then rachel simpson would be the addiction person um but again i don't remember because i but i got two phones working here and i don't want to do that but um and anyway i thank love you. that you're drinking wine and you don't remember who the addiction person is i know <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah that should be a fun show shouldn't it um but i do want to thank um my give i do want to thank my guests for this <laughs> michelle harris from alive and well tv give us the website again and everything michelle uh, alive and well dot TV and the live is a and D well. Wait a minute, dot TV. Yes, like television. Alive and well. Jenny's doing closed captioning for all of us. There you go. <laughs> alive and well dot TV. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. And the name of your organization and where can they find that website? Yeah, uh, we don't have a website. We have a Facebook page, and it's Animal Angels TV on Facebook. Oh, good God! Why do you have a more animal? Oops, <laughs> animal, <laughs> angels. animal Angels what? Facebook. TV. Animal Angels TV, TV. Like television. T is in Thomas. V is in Victor. You got it. There you go. Yay! And your response is required by law. <laughs> And the scary English woman with her tea bag sting senses will at your door any day now. <laughs> and Dana, 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 where where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on all the socials. I'm very active on Twitter, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, and it's all at DG Comedy. As Jenny's going to do this <laughs> at DG Comedy. And um, once things get up and going again, uh, my website is danagoldberg.com, but social media is the place to find me now. So before we leave, when do you really think, like right now, like right now I'm doing these Facebook live things every night at 8.30, um, and I promised everybody I'd do them till the isolation's over, which I had no clue it was gonna be April 30th. Do you think this is gonna go later than April 30th? I think that there's going to be some restrictions that go into June and July. My problem with my work is that I think the restrictions might be lifted, but I think the gatherings of more than a certain amount of people are going to stay in place. And so for like me and Jenny, you know, we have, you know, sometimes we have small shows where there's 50 people, but I host galas of 3000. And so a lot of my work is going to stay, unfortunately, I think it's going to stay off for a while. Mm -hmm. Too. Well, I'll Venmo you just to have a Zoom call, one-on-one -on -one Zoom call, because you make me laugh, and I love you, and I thank both thank of you for joining us tonight, um, and this is the new norm for now, so thank you both. Um, I'm actually happy that the coronavirus happened because you're both on the show, so thanks a lot. I really appreciate it, and you guys made the show a wonderful show and a lot of information, and, and you guys make me laugh. Um, Jenny, where can we find you, sweetheart? Please go to uh, my fan page on Facebook where I'm streaming my show. It's, so it's go to Facebook and then it's Jenny, I.E. Because my mom wanted to fuck with me. 
Uh, Jenny, I E McNulty fan. And then you, if you if you follow, then I think you get notified when I go live. And I'm going live Monday through Friday at one o'clock. I got on uh, Monday. I have Sandra Valls, who's hilarious. On Tuesday, I'm talking to Michelle Ballin, who was stranded on a cruise ship for like a month with this wow. coronavirus. So Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday at one p.m. on my fan page because. I'm sure she's hilarious anyway, but stick that woman, make her stuck on a ship for a while. <laughs> and then, um, Kim, yes, love. What what's going on with you? Where can people find you on Facebook? Uh, I guess if you wanted to find me on Facebook, you could. I'm I'm out and about. Just say hi to me on the street. We can't talk to you. We have to stay six feet away. We so, won't be able to see you with that ridiculous mask on. I have another whiteboard. What would you like me to say, Kim? <laughs> uh, single. Kim <laughs> is single. All right, there we go. Find her on Facebook. Thanks, Jenny. You're welcome. Cara. Oh, oh, and by the way, everybody wanted to know about Cara. Cara is a breeder. She's straight for now. A breeder? Oh, uh, breeder. Okay. I had a request from a text message about Cara from my friend in Alabama. Everybody wants Cara. So, Cara, where can people find you? Not to fuck you, but where could they find you and what do you do? Uh, I am a voice artist. I'm on Facebook, Cara Noble. I'm also Cara Noble Voice on Facebook. And I also write questions and answers on Quora.com. So have a look at that because that's a pretty interesting site. Quora. Quora. Q-U-A. Q-U-O-R-A. O-R-A. Yeah, people ask questions and answers. Some people are, 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 are professionals and some are laymen. It's just a real mix. But it's an interesting site. Well, thank you. I'm Gay Ann Bruno. I'm between the sheets. You don't have to write this down. No, it's way too fucking long, Jenny. <laughs> <clears throat> we are here the first and third Friday of every month. I'm also doing a between the sheets happy hour. Shocking, it's tied to drinking. That's every Thursday at 6 p.m. on Zoom. And I'll post all that on my Facebook page. And we've been getting these wonderful women. And I always said, I said a couple of weeks ago, I want to do a between the sheets dating app. Well, the between the sheets happy hour is becoming one of that. Also, nice. yeah, it is actually. And um, also nightly. At 8.30 on my Facebook page, I will be doing, I always do a live Facebook rants, stream of consciousness. And tonight actually, at um, actually I'm going on later at 9.15, I actually decided to go a little bit more spiritual. I'm gonna be discussing um, Ruiz's four agreements. So it's the nice. dummy guide to the four agreements. Um, I'm drunk, which I told him I would be, so it's going to be a shit show and fun anyway. But um, it's that's not about you. Not <laughs> just a personal. <laughs> with your words, no shit. Uh, and there's two more agreements, but I can't remember what they are. <laughs> I actually printed them out because I knew I'd be in this state after this show. Um, and also. <sighs> Um, there's a, a good friend of mine and a friend of all of ours, except for the straight people, um, Tamara, and oh, she yeah. really does Tuesdays with Tamara at the Abbey. So what she's starting now is on Tuesdays on Zoom, uh, she's going Tuesdays with Tamara. So we're going to have fun there. So I think everyone, I think we should have um, Tuesdays with Tamara, Wednesday with Jenny, Thursday between the sheets, Friday with Dana. So, <laughs> Every so every day we should have a happy hour with all of us. So I just want to thank you guys all for joining us again. Thank you so much, Michelle, for making time. I appreciate it. Oh, Dana, you. you fucking rule. I am so honored that you've decided. Thank you for having me on. It's no, about dude, time. Thank you so much. Jenny, I love you. Kara, I love you. Kim, I adore you and love you too. Um, we'll be back the third Friday in April. Um, and um, Shout anyway. out for the traumatized bunny. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you, she'll Jenny. be fine once we get a normal lighting scenario in here. Exactly. <laughs> so everybody, you guys out there, please be safe. Wear your masks, wear your gloves, keep your distance, breathe. It's all about breathing um, and um, support your local businesses. Please, no matter what it is, if they're still open, please support them. Do not vote for Trump. Blue, vote blue, no matter who the fuck it is. And, um, and as I always signed off, um, you know, I do love you guys. Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for dealing with our hijinks and our insanity and our 
God knows my and everybody else's ADD because I think it's catching. But um, please be safe. We love you. And namaste. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good night, everybody. Thank you.